Hi, I'm T. Kat Nelson, and I want to welcome you to our online learning center. Um, so all this video is here is I want to talk to you a little bit about the concepts behind KSK Martial Arts and give some credit so you guys can understand sort of where all this, uh, all this came from. So in KSK Martial Arts, um, it is the name of our school, but what we also want you to recognize that KSK Martial Arts is really uh, sort of three things come together. Now, uh, in our symbol for KSK Martial Arts, we have a triangle shape in there, and, that, and the symbol represents many things. Uh, and the triangle by itself in martial arts represents many things. But specifically what we're going to talk about right here in this video is the three things, uh, the three points of the triangle make up the three points of KSK martial arts. Um, the first point uh, of the triangle is essentially what we talk about is our weaponry skills. In our weaponry skills, uh, the curriculum we use for that is what we call our Mas Kali. Then we have our empty hand skills. And our empty hand skills, we call that curriculum Kaishin Ji Kundo. And then at the top of the triangle, we have thinking skills. And the thinking skills is the most important, that's why it's at the top. Because essentially, uh, the way we think up here has everything to do with what we do with our physical skills from our weapons curriculum and our empty hand curriculum, right? So how we approach things through our thinking has everything to do with what we physically do with our body. So those are kind of our main three areas. You have the weaponry skills, which is the Armas Kali curriculum. You have the empty hand skills, which is the Kaishin Jeet Kune Do curriculum. And then we have thinking skills. Now, in the weaponry part of it, or our Mas Kali section, uh, that curriculum is based up primarily of various concepts and techniques taught in different Filipino martial arts. Um, although it's not limited to just that, but it is specifically the weapons. Of course, in Filipino martial arts, we have all sorts of empty hand techniques too, but those make their way over to our empty hand curriculum. So, in our Armas Kali curriculum, we're looking at all weaponry. Uh, we're looking at primarily from different Filipino martial arts, but you're also going to see some. Uh, some influences in there from um, from Kabrika Brong, which is a uh, weapon system of Thailand. You're going to also see some um, some influences from Kobudo, which is the weapon system of Okinawa. Now, in the empty hand curriculum or the Kaishin JKD, what you're going to see there is you're going to see we're going to break it apart into five different areas of training. It's going to break it apart into what what I sort of have. Uh, uh, over the years has sort of broken down into recognizing as five categories or five areas of empty hand self-defense. And those five areas are striking, clinching, trapping, manipulation, and grappling. And we'll get more into that in the introduction video uh, in the Kaishin JKD program. So as we said before, at the top of the triangle is thinking skills. So what are thinking skills, right? So thinking skills. These are our thinking process and guiding philosophies. These help a student grow as a person, as a leader, grow as a member of the group, become a good training partner to others, and help us to find responsible use of the things we are taught. We take this time to actively teach these skills as part of our classes. So when it comes to our weapons curriculum, which is the Armas Kali, and our empty hand curriculum, which is the Kaishin Ji Kune Do, probably the most defining feature of these two curriculums is that we try to teach them in the most logical order possible for the quickest learning for the student in a way that we can kind of seamlessly blend uh, all the different techniques and concept, concepts from the different styles uh, that, that we draw from or we are inspired by. Um, you know, one thing that uh, we really try to do in both these curriculums is we try to teach uh, function first. We try to teach the application base first. And along with that, we try to also add in, as a student kind of gets those ideas, we put in more attribute-based movement. So basically what happens is first you learn uh, the gross motor of the technique. You, you get the understanding of it down. You get to make it work right here, right now. And then as time goes by, we get more refined movement. We start to teach things that take a little bit longer to sort of master, take a little bit more higher level of discipline that you have to accomplish in the beginning, right? So essentially what we look for is we look for uh, function first, then fancy follows after that. And one of the last things I want to get made clear when we're talking about what is KSK Martial Arts is that KSK Martial Arts, the, the two physical curriculums that you're going to learn, the, the Kali and, the, and, the, and the, the Kaishin JKD, is that these, are, these, are, these curriculums are my personal process of my training, my learning. And it's taught, the curriculums are taught in the order that I feel is best for a student to understand, that I, that I personally see that, that students move quickly with based on the research I've done with myself and with my own training partners and with my own students over the years. Um, like everything, like everything else, everything is good anyways, it evolves, it changes. So you're going to see this curriculum change over time. But that's one of the nice things about it being 
in online learning centers that we can just go in and we can update and we can change a video and get that information out to you right away. Um, so, you know, evolution is good. Uh, sometimes I think about what, uh, what Guru Dan will sometimes, Guru Dan and Asana will say to me sometimes, and, um, or he'll, he'll also say in seminars, like, you know, nobody will dispute that George Washington was a great general, but you might not want to follow him into battle today. So, because the times are different, you know, the, the tactics are different. And so, this always happens. As I get older, as you get older, our bodies change, our mindsets change, our environments change, everything changes. And therefore, the martial arts we, we practice and study will as well. And I foresee the curriculums evolving and changing as well. But for right now, just so everybody understands that the you know, KSK martial arts, the two physical curriculums are, are my personal uh, expressions and interpretations of the things I've been taught. Uh, taught in the order that I feel is best to learn in. So when you're talking about KSK martial arts, you know, we've got the triangle of KSK martial arts and we've got, you know, the weapon skills, which is the Armas Kali curriculum, the empty hand skills, which is the Kaishin Jeet Kune Do curriculum, and then we've got the thinking skills up at the top of the triangle. So when we're talking about credit, you know, the first thing I want to talk about is, is that the, the physical techniques in the curriculums, uh, they come from things that have either been taught to me even by my teachers or things that I have found with training partners and, stu and students during experiment and play. Um, now, you know, we don't claim to have created or invented anything but because there's really nothing new under the sun. But what I will say is that you know, we have discovered or found things that were potentially there all along. Um, cause well, in all honesty, you're, you're prone to do that sort of thing with any kind of dedicated study. Um, you know, we by no means say that these techniques don't exist in, in other systems and in other places, because if we found them, then certainly somebody else has found them too. So uh, you know, we just want to make sure that, that, uh, that you understand when you're viewing this material that's on this online learning center that a lot of this material, uh, most of the material has been handed down to me from other instructors and, and, uh, and other teachers, and, but also things that we have found with other training partners, things that we've just found on our own. Um, and you're going to wind up doing that as well. As you experiment, as you play, you will stumble across and discover things that were already there that you never knew. The only way to do it is just to get in there and train. One of the sayings I always liked most was, uh, I saw at the, the beginning of uh, one of Guru Harley Elmore's videos, which was, you know, anything you find on your own is just as valid as anything that somebody else teaches you. I have had and still do have uh, many different teachers in the martial arts, but probably the biggest influence for me um, has been my teacher and mentor, Guru Dan Inosanto. And he really, he really to me is the example of what I'm trying to achieve someday as, as both as a martial artist uh, and as a human being. You know, I've been really lucky uh, to have the time that I have in training with him. I started training with him around 2000, uh, and I've had the opportunity to see him several times a year in seminars, uh, train with him in instructor camps, uh, to be a student in his regular classes at his academy. Um, and you know, every time I see him, he really sets the bar for me. Um, you know, I feel very grateful and very blessed uh, to be uh, you know, a student under Guru Dan and, and very proud to be an instructor under Guru Dan and his martial arts family. Um, you know, and hopefully I'm able to pass on to you some of that positivity and light that he's passed on to me. I am hugely influenced by those teachers who I either have had or still have the opportunity to have regular hands-on experience with. And I have had some amazing teachers in a lot of different areas. Uh, some of these amazing teachers are Sifu David Hatch, uh, his wife Sima Linda Hatch, Coach Sean Kitzman, Professor Chet Shummelhorn, Baron Brock, Tadashi Yamashita, Sensei David Hayes, Todd Jones, Shihan Charles Peterson, and Robert Verdell. Uh, these men alone have contributed uh, a huge amount of knowledge uh, towards the curriculums. I am also very grateful for having the opportunity to train with those people who I haven't had a ton of opportunity to train with. For instance, I've got a lot of people that I've been able to train with either uh, like through seminars, whether it be annual seminars or semi-annual seminars or some of them maybe even just one time. Uh, some of these teachers, I've had the opportunity to be just only a visiting student in their classes for a few classes. You know, and other, uh, other teachers I may have only had the opportunity for maybe, uh, you know, maybe just a few hours of private lessons with. Regardless, although I don't have countless hours of training with all of these teachers, what I do have is that I take detailed notes and what I do is I come home with that knowledge 
And immediately I start working it with my training partners and with my students and discuss it with my regular teachers. And we try to take that knowledge and try to internalize it, try to understand it better, try to figure out how it works for me. We'll see how it works for other people and try to get that knowledge kind of kind of up to the next level, at least our, our next level of understanding. So although we may not have a million hours face-to-face uh, -face with these people, we do put a lot of training time in on that material. Some of these amazing teachers have been Sensei Eric Paulson, Sifu Francis Fong, Arjan Chai Sarasu, Arjan Greg Nelson, Sifu Paul Vunak, Professor Hoist Gracie, Professor Jean-Jacques Machado, Professor Carlos Kaiki, Sifu Yuri Nakamura, Sifu Rick Fay, Guru Harley Elmore, Dan Severn, James Lee, Dr. G, and Taika Seiyu Oyata. Of course, without good training partners, all this research and training and or discovery, this would have never happened had I not had the assistance of excellent, excellent training partners. Um, good students, good friends, and good teachers. Um, and to be honest with you, probably uh, the, most, the most valuable of all these training partners to me over the years, I have to give credit to my longest training student and my best friend, Guru Brett Eckhart. Um, without Brett, most of this wouldn't be possible. We would go to seminars, we still do go to seminars, uh, we train our butts off, we take lots of notes, lots of written notes, lots of video notes. Most importantly, you know, we come back after the seminar and we train it, and we record it, and we play with it, and we get inside and outside and take it apart and put it back together and we try to figure out all the little pieces. So I just want to make sure I make that acknowledgement and uh, to me, he is probably the most important part of my training because he is such an excellent training partner. And that's really what we try to do at KSK Martial Arts, we try to create good training partners. So when someone says to me, you know, what is KSK Martial Arts really all about? To me, it's about constant self-improvement and it's about the relationships that we form with other people. So, so there you have some of the concepts behind KSK Martial Arts along with a little bit of information of some of the different people that have contributed to the knowledge and the curriculums uh, over the years. Uh, so good luck to you in your training and I look forward to hopefully working with you.